ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode, uh, who cares, of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and look, guys... Uh, I've been I've been doing a lot of things and I've been seeing a lot of things and my job is to tell you about it, okay? And firstly, I saw something incredible, okay? Before I get into that, though, uh, my tour is going to go on sale very shortly and uh, you should sign up to the pre-sale list, loosebeers.com slash gig list. Get your name and city uh, on there, your phone number if you want to put it in as well, and I will shoot you a message when I'm coming to your town, okay? We're getting back on the road. I feel good. Uh, we're going to take it slowly, so I'm not going to find can explode but uh yeah the next uh run of shows are going on sale very soon we've got a brand new show we've got an amazing poster that's going to drop and an even better to a name uh i've I, i've always been good at naming shit but i've outdone myself here also if you are enjoying the podcast you want to support what i do i've God knows I need it. Check out the Patreon. I do a Patreon-exclusive episode every single week. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Also, if you want to send me an email to the podcast, podcast at loosespears.com. Life advice questions, funny stories, confessions, send them through. If you send me an email, you're going to make the show, all right? That's my admin out of the way. Now, I went for a swim, okay, because you guys know I'm an athlete. Right, we'll get into that later. But I went for a swim and I saw something magnificent in the change rooms, the men's change rooms to be specifically, to be specific, because I was in the women's change room, but I didn't see anything amazing. But the men's, I saw something good. Okay, I don't feel like doing it. Sorry, I was, I was freaking out because I had to go to the dentist. I just got back from the dentist. I had a lot, I had feelings. I also had a panic attack. When I can speak about it, I'll, um, I'll tell you about it tomorrow. But for you, that's like 30 seconds. It wasn't fun. Well, this is kind of funny, how I sound. <laughs> okay, third time's the charm. Uh, we are back at it. I'm recording this one on Sunday. This is my third go at recording it because, man, I think the dentist, dentist fucked me up. Dude, I'll get into it later. The, I need to talk about something very important, and that is what I saw at the pool, okay? I've started getting the swimming again. All right, because uh, as you as you all know, not only am I Australia's greatest comedian with Australia's only podcast, I'm also an athlete, and part of being an athlete is obviously uh, a strict swimming regimen of going regularly about six months ago and then never getting in a pool again until a couple of days ago. But I swam a kilometre in half an hour. That's pretty fucking good, actually. That's not too bad. So I'm happy because I thought it'd be a lot worse, but... Me swimming in the pool, believe it or not, was not the greatest thing that I'd seen. It probably was the greatest thing that everybody else saw. But me, man, I saw something that was just phenomenal in the men's change room. Now, generally, the men's change room is not something where you see phenomenal things, especially not the the men's change room of a public pool. Gyms, right? Gym men's change rooms, usually fine for me, right? Bunch of dudes getting changed, rarely see dick and balls. Public pool is a nutsack fest, all right? You might even see some hole if you're lucky because there are some old dudes and they don't they don't care anymore. They have stopped caring. Now, see, see me, I had this moment in my life, all right? I'm almost 30 and I'm starting to care a little bit less. Before, I would never, ever, ever get my nuts out in a men's change room, ever, all right? Now I'm starting to feel like I want to do it. I think the I think the only thing that is stopping me from getting my balls out in the men's change room in, in public, like not in the cubicle, because there's always a cubicle, all right? I'm a cubicle man my whole life. I've been a cubicle boy because when you swim, there's there's no alternative. You've got to get your nuts out. And and some of some of some of you ladies are included in that, okay? Because because you're allowed in whatever change room you want now. Okay, so I know a few. I know a few ladies are listening to this and going, you know what? Sometimes I do need to get my nuts out. See, that's the that's the that's the dilemma. That we that's that's the thing that that's really going to get people talking in about sixty years. Is is obviously right. The 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 people that uh, don't want trans people in women's bathrooms, they're kind of losing this one. You know, it's looking like a loss for them. It's it's looking like those bathrooms are going to have them. All right. Now I'm not here to talk about whether or not that's correct or the right thing to do. I'm here to talk about the consequences of that decision in about 60 years from now because uh, once you hit about 
60 to 80 years old, right? Which is all of these trans women right now today who are making their first foray into the women's bathroom, all right? I'm sure all of these chicks are very much like me. And they're all thinking that when I need to get my balls out in in the change room, I'm going to, I'm going to do that in the cubicle because I don't want everyone here to look at my balls, all right? I don't want all the, all the women in this change room to look at my little girl nuts, okay? Shriveled as they may be. But I think, this is my prediction, okay? Just judging from the behavior of every old person that I see in a change room is that what is that because trans women are now allowed in women's bathrooms, generally speaking, 60 years from now, all these women are gonna are gonna start seeing balls in their in their change room. Female balls, absolutely. All right. I wouldn't miss I wouldn't miss misgender those testes. That's not me. That's not who I am. I'm no bigot. But but what I am saying is that I think a lot of these women who are allies, and, and maybe rightfully so, right? A lot of these women who are allies, 60, 40 years from now, they're going to go, whoa, 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 whoa. You can use the change room, but I don't want to see your nuts. Miss? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just hypothesizing here, okay? And I'm being theoretical. But but look, old female balls is not what I wanted to talk about in this episode. Although here we are and I'm and I'm I'm enjoying the detour, okay? What I want to talk about was what I saw in the, in the change room. And that's what I, that's what I was going to say. I'm very much a nutsack hider. I'm, I'm, I'm a, sh- when it comes to my balls, I'm shy. All right. When it comes to posting the, the full outline of my hog on Instagram. All right. I'll do that only unknowingly. All right. If I knew it was there, I wouldn't have posted it. It's out there. I can't take it back, but you guys know me. Okay. You guys have been following me for long enough. Okay. I've been doing this for 10 years now. All right. And I think that enough of you long-term Spears fans It's time for you guys to accept something. Yes, all right? I'm a comedian. I'm a stand-up comedian. Yes, I care about funny first, all right? I care about funny much more than than politics, than, than even being correct. I'll say the wrong thing if it's funnier, all right? I care very, very much about funny, all right? But every now and then, I'm also gonna be a little bit slutty. And that's my right. That's my right. As a human being, I'm, I'm, I'm multi-layered, all right? I'm like an onion, I'm like an ogre, and one of my layers is, is I'm a little bit slutty. And that's my right, all right? If they had a slut walk in Melbourne, I'd be leading the fucking, I'd be leading the march, all right? Because, because every now and then, it doesn't matter, all right, what you think, all right? I'm reclaiming the word slut. Every now and then, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit slutty, and that's fine. And if you're uncomfortable with that, then that's a problem within you, within yourself. Because I've been doing this for 10 years and it's not all the time. All right. It's not every day. It's not even every, it's not even multiple times a month, but every now and then I, Lewis Spears will do something a little bit slutty because that's who I am on the inside. And that's the type that's the type of person that you've decided to follow. I mean, look, look at what I'm wearing right now. Okay. I could have just chucked on a t-shirt, but I didn't. I put on a little button up and I undid the buttons a little bit too low and I rolled the sleeves up and then I tucked it into a very nice thick belt and I'm wearing skinny jeans. So it doesn't matter how funny I'm being right now, I'm also a little bit being a bit slutty. And that's just who I am on the inside. I know that a lot of my female listeners, all three of you, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. It's okay, you could be a doctor. You could be studying medicine. You could be someone who looks after your elderly mother with dementia, but every now and then you're also going to be a little bit slutty. And that's just how the world is. And if, and if you don't like that, well, that's a problem within yourself, all right? Because who said that slut had to be a bad word? Who said it was a derogatory term? I didn't. In fact, I'm, I'm embracing the term and I'm, and I'm making it my own, okay? So, yes. This is a comedy podcast, but it's also a slutty podcast. And you might follow me for, for the stand-up clips. You might follow me for the hoaxes, for the jokes, for the videos. And that's all well and good. 
but every now and then I'm going to be a little bit slutty, okay? And, and sometimes I won't even realize that I'm doing it, all right? Sometimes I, I won't even know, okay? I'll be tucking my tight little short little shirts into, into my Gucci belt and I'll look at myself in the mirror and I'll go, I look great. And then some woman will look at me and go, that's a, that's a man slut and that's okay, all right? That's a problem with her. Every now and then I'm going to be a little bit slutty and that is me, who I am, and it's time to embrace that. Okay, I think we all have that side in us, you know? Bunch of dudes out there listening to this that have quite hairy chests, not doing their buttons all the way up. Hey, fellas, that's a little bit slutty and that's okay. Don't get me wrong, that's fine. But let's let's call a spade a spade here, all right, you little whore. That's a little bit slutty. A few, a few girls, all right, chucking on, it's, it's, it's summer, well, it's pretty hot right now in Australia. Chuck it on your, your warmer outfits, all right? Maybe a, maybe a skirt just above the knee, that's fine. A T-shirt, all right? Tight little T-shirt, that's also good, okay? But then you're going to put on some shoes and some knee-high socks, it's a little bit slutty, all right? And there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying the knee-high socks were, were unnecessary, okay? They, they don't add anything practical to the outfit, and they're not exactly whorish, but let's call a spade a spade here. It's a little bit slutty. Mm? You know, a couple girls chucking on a normal outfit to go into the city during the day to get a nice coffee. And then they go, you know what? I'm going to wear on top of this a little, uh, one of those little necklaces that are actually a bit of an elastic choker. Okay, let's call a spade a spade here. It's a little bit slutty. And that's fine. All right. And Lord knows if I could rock it, I would do it, but I think my neck is too long. Okay? so And that's the person that you follow, okay? I, Lewis Spears, am a very funny comedian, and I care about stand-up comedy more than anything else in the world. But every now and then I'm going to be a little bit slutty, and that is fine. Okay? So anyway, I'm in the men's bathroom hiding my balls, Okay, and I was going to say the only thing stopping me right now from just getting my fucking nuts out, because it is annoying when you are that person that, that has to hide their nuts, that doesn't want to get the fucking yams out in the, in, so the, all the other chicks see when you're in the women's bathroom. You don't want to get those fucking milkers out in front of everyone. You know, when, you, when you're the type of person who's, who's like, ah... Half the people in here are naked, but I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm a naked changer, all right? I think the only thing stopping me from getting my fucking hog out in the men's bathroom is the fact that it's not all the time, but every now and then I hear, oh, shit, Lewis Spears, and that's, that's it, you know? And, and that's great, okay? That's awkward enough, rather. That's awkward enough when I'm in the men's bathroom and I'm changing, Okay? But I haven't gotten naked. If I was, if I heard, if I got my fucking balls out and had, oh shit, Lewis Spears, I love you. Co- oh, his dick's out. Like that's fucking, I can't do that. I can't have that happen to me because here's the thing about being a vaguely known person is that when someone recognizes you, everyone in the room hears it, turns to look at you and go, who's the, f- who the fuck is that guy? And, you, and that's all well and good when you're at a cafe, when you're in the street, when you're at a bar. No worries, okay? All good. If my fucking balls were out, I don't need fucking 30 people, half of them naked, looking at me and going, who is that guy and what's going on with his nuts? I can't have that. So I think for the rest of my life, I'm going to be a guy who changes in the cubicle when I need to get my nuts out which I do every time I swim because I'm wearing little Speedos, which, which again, all right, I could have bought the, the shorts, all right? I could have bought the shorts. Fuck it, I could have bought the budgie smugglers, but instead I bought the really, really small shorts. So it's not the budgie smugglers because I'm not a fucking whore, all right? But it's not the shorts because every now and then I'm a little bit slutty. You know? But the, the problem that it presents, right, being a cubicle changer, that's all well and good, okay? 
when you are like a regular sized person, when you're a person that's built for the world and the objects within it, right? Changing in the cubicle is fine. And some of my trans women will actually appreciate this and, and resonate with what I'm about to say. When you are six foot eight and you go in to a fucking cubicle to get changed, right? Most of the cubicles come up to my nipples, right? So I just tower over every single cubicle. So if I go into the middle cubicle and there's one either side of me, I can see in with that in my peripheral vision. I'm not even looking. It's in my peripherals, right? And if you have ever seen a human being before, they're not six foot eight, okay? So to every other person in the cubicle, it's so much more realistic and plausible for them to think that the reason they can see me towering over the cubicle is because I'm climbing up to have a look over the top to see their balls, not that I'm six foot eight and it's out of my control. So fuck man, I have made I have made some horrible eye contact with parents that are in cubicles changing their like children. <laughs> and and the the flashes of rage I see in their face that quickly changes to confusion and then feeling embarrassed in less than a second is is astounding. This fucking pervert. Oh my God. That guy's really tall. I can't believe I was about to kill him. I feel silly. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah. So here's what I saw in the men's bathroom while I was packing up my things, getting ready to go into the pu cubicle to get my nuts out. Right? So I'm in there. I just finished my swim. Okay. I'm in my slutty little speedos and, uh, there's like a real old guy, real old fat dude, okay? He's one of those guys that doesn't give a fuck anymore, okay? He's 60. He's been through it all, all right? He's seen his fair share of nut sacks. What's another one to add to the pile? He's getting his fucking balls out. This man is completely naked. And he is at a level of not giving a fuck so far down the path of not caring that I can't even comprehend it, okay? Here's where I'm at. I'm, full, I'm like not getting my balls out, but not only am I not doing that, I'm also wearing, uh, I'm wearing water shoes so that my bare feet don't touch the, the fucking change room floor because I don't want to get athlete's foot. All right, that's where I'm at. I'm not even making skin to skin contact with the floor. All right, meanwhile, this old man is absolutely fucking naked. I can't even tell if he's halfway through changing or just hanging out with his balls out. Either way, I respect it. But not only is he completely naked, seemingly not changing, just hanging out, just hanging out while he's hanging out. He's also fucking asshole and balls <laughs> contact with the fucking bench that everyone's sitting on. So he's like, he's just like spread his nuts and his asshole and his ass pre fucking shower, pre swim, on the, on the fucking... So here I am worried about getting athlete's foot. This guy's going to get athlete's rim. This man is going to get athlete's gooch. Athlete's tip. It's not good. All right? I'll, I'm fine with the being completely naked in the men's bathroom. Don't fucking put your hole on the bench. All right? I might want to put my bag there. Anyway, so he's completely naked and he's sitting like I am in this chair right now, okay? But way more slutty. This man's naked, all right? Man spreading. He's got a big gut, so it's spreading his legs. And then, right, he's, he's like right by the entrance. It's just like this, okay? So imagine someone on my right just starts walking past me, okay? This happens. This dude walks down. It's a big, long hallway. Okay, but it's quite narrow. So probably from me to the camera, the camera, you, that's the wall. Okay, so it's quite narrow, very long. Now, a dude walks past. He's just finished swimming and he's got his bag and he walks past and the guy drops his goggles right in front of the completely naked, very fat old man. Now, I see this old dude, right, you know, think, oh, fuck, this guy has dropped his goggles. He goes to reach for them. He can't reach them. He's too fat. 
okay? So what this man does, he does the right thing, okay? But it's the short-sighted thing. And I see this coming from a mile away. So I immediately stop changing and start staring, okay? So the guy's dropped his goggles right in front of the naked dude. And the guy goes, hey, man, hey, hey, dude, excuse me. And then the dude who dropped the goggles turns around and the old man's like, you dropped your goggles, man. And the guy's like, ah, whoops. Thanks, dude. And then waits for the old guy to pass the goggles to him. The old man goes, like gesturing, I can't pick them up. So <laughs> this dude that just finished swimming had to walk up to the goggles and he just stands in front of the incredibly fat, naked old dude pressed up against the wall as far away as possible from him and looks down at the goggles and both of them realise that if this guy wants to pick his goggles up, he's going to have to squat down right in front of this man's balls to be able to reach them because he's pressed against the wall here. So the only way to get down is to get closer. <laughs> and I watched this dude hesitate for at least three seconds going, how disabled is this old man? <laughs> How fat is this guy who can, can he really not fucking pick up those goggles and pass them to me? And the old man, bless his heart, kicks the goggles closer, but it doesn't help because the dude's against the wall. So the dude starts to bend down, but as he bends down, his bum sticks out and his head starts to move closer to the old dude. So I see this fucking Mission Impossible shit of the dude like pressed up right against the wall and trying to lower himself down so that he doesn't get too close to the guy's nuts. But then he reaches out and then fucking overbalances and falls straight forward directly towards the man's nuts and then has to brace himself against the ground, gets his goggles, and then I, I think he panicked here, right? So he's looking at the floor, right? Looking at his goggles, He's but he's right there. And, I, and, and he could have got out of this scar-free, but he fucked up. And, and as he's like sitting down, squatting down, picking up his goggles, instead of picking up the goggles and then standing up, he grabs the goggles and then he starts to look up and I I I want to I want to yell what are you doing stop man you're going to don't do this to yourself my brother please and then the guy just starts slowly looking up and I just see the horror on his face I just see the, the expression change several times as the guy's gaze moves from goggles up to discolored legs up to dirty thighs up to balls up to cock, then to gut, then to tits, and then to the face of the man. And by the time he got there, he had been scarred, my friend. And he still said thank you, <laughs> picked up the cockles and walked away. And the man didn't see the face that this guy made, but he made a face like it changed him. That shit fucking he got a He got an up-close look at this man's old balls, old cock, a lot of gut and some tits as well, far too close, like in sniffing distance. You know, depending on this levels, the, 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 the levels of this man's hygiene, he probably would have got a taste too, just from the smell. You know, when something's so pungent, it goes in your nose and all of a sudden you feel it on your tongue. I reckon that's what he got, a whiff of this man's balls, right? He got a whiff and a taste. And he just and he walks away and he just like you know when you see something fucked and you just you just go and you just stare at the floor and he did that all the way out and he left without changing. <laughs> he it was wet. He went from there. He was gonna change it. He saw something so fucking horrible that he just went straight to his car, probably to go and sit in the wet and the cold and have a real fucking think about what he's seen, what he what he saw. Why did I look up? I, I should have closed my eyes. Goggles are only 20 bucks. I should have left them there. Did that man do that on purpose? Was he actually disabled or did he want, did he want me that close to his cock? Why was he sitting there naked for that long? Why was, why was he going hold the bench? The man's going to get athlete's rim. So that was, that was phenomenal, man. That was really, really great. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, I, I guess that's the joys of being the type of dude that, that gives so little fucks that he just gets his nuts out 
in the men's change room is every now and then you can change the trajectory of some young man's life. <laughs> now, right. Um, uh, my tickets are definitely going on sale, by the way, uh, in the next couple of days. So make sure you're on the pre-sale list, loosebeers.com slash gig list. Get your uh, tickets uh, or sign up, put your city in and and, uh, and your info in and I'll send you a message. The pre-sale is going to open uh, probably on Monday or Tuesday. I will let you know on Instagram, but uh, patrons will get even earlier access than that. So if you want to check out the Patreon, there's a Patreon only podcast comes out every single week. You get early access to everything that I upload. And uh, yeah, it's a great little community here in discord. Uh, An amazing thing actually that we've got going in the discord. This is something really cool is obviously we lost Keelan, um, which is, which is, I'm still kind of processing. We lost him, but what we managed to do is uh, obviously AI is a big thing. Chat GPT is a huge thing. And uh, it's actually uh, made by a company called open AI. Now, the reason they're called OpenAI, they're actually a nonprofit, and the um, the AI, the code they use to build their AI, it's open source. So anyone can download it and make their own version. So what we've actually done, we've used some of the Patreon money, well, a lot of the Patreon money, we've actually built um, a local server that hosts artificial intelligence. And what I've done is I've taken every single Spearhead Sunday's podcast that uh, Keelan's on and also all of the Luke and Lewis episodes that he's on, as well as uh, a fuckload of my private chats with him, texts, messages, um, and uh, a, a lot of his family gave me access to some of his social media. So we uploaded, you know, uh, just all of his DMs and, and all of his posts. Uh, we've got a lot of browser history in there as well. And what we've managed to do is we've actually uploaded all of this and plugged it into our AI. And I've, I've, uh, I've actually hired an IT guy, Whitey, who understands AI to um, teach and program this local uh, AI server using all of the information that we have on Keelan. And what we've actually got running in the Patreon Discord is we have uh, a pretty much fully functional AI version of Keelan in the Discord. It's really cool. So we've we because we, we got his Discord account as well. So we've got access to that, and we've connected it to this local server AI that's hosted by me, and we've got it almost perfect, where you can interact with the Keelan bot, and it will respond as Keelan would have. Now, there's a few kinks. Obviously, we want to we need to weed out a lot of the racism. Um, that I'm not saying that's that's inaccurate because he was like that. I'm saying that a lot of that stuff will get us um, taken down by Discord. So we just need to get a few bugs out of that. But if you want to join the Patreon, you can interact with the Keelan bot AI, um, have a bit of a back and forth with it, send it a few messages, ask it some questions. It will respond. And for the most part, 95% of the time, it sounds just like Keelan. Like ask it about homeless or disabled people or poor people, and you'll get like a, a really big rant response. And uh, there are a few bugs, so if you find a bug, just report it to me. But it's a it's a great piece of tech, and uh, man, I'm just excited to use it because in, in a way, I've kind of got my friend back, which is which is amazing because I've missed him a lot. We all have, and um, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's really cool. So uh, give that a go. It's on the Patreon right now. If you want to interact with the Keelan bot, you also get a bunch of uh, uh, early access to to podcast and a bunch of archive Patreon only episodes of the show that come out every single week as well. So yeah, check that out. Uh, it's worth doing. <clears throat> now uh, I want to talk about the dentist because obviously this is a this podcast is going up quite late on a Sunday. I'm recording this. Uh, I'm going to upload it as soon as we're done. It is nine thirty right now. I have had like three or four goes at trying to record this episode. So I uh, was going to the dentist because I'm very sick. (laughs) Um, And uh, when I had the surgery, I couldn't brush my teeth for three months. Uh, I had an x-ray before the surgery and I had like the beginnings of, of like my first cavity ever in my life. Right. And uh, they did an x-ray of that. And uh, basically um, the orthodontist noticed that it had gotten a little bit worse. So after the surgery, I couldn't brush my teeth for three months because obviously it was too uh, painful and, and they, I was not allowed to. All I could do was like rinse my mouth out with water and Listerine. But then also when I had the expander put in, there were just a lot of places that um, I couldn't get my toothbrush into. And anyway, long story short, I couldn't brush my teeth properly for about fucking six months, which is really gross. Uh, And my one almost cavity went up to four because also I found out, I didn't know this, using a CPAP machine, the thing that breathes for me, I wear it every night, 
it can erode your teeth. So it was like horrible dental hygiene for a long time, but then also this CPAP machine that erodes teeth. It fucked like four of my teeth. Now I've got the expander out. I can brush properly and I'm using a, a water pick and all that kind of stuff. And I've gotten a lot of tips from the dentist. So it shouldn't happen again. But fuck, I went to the dentist to have a look at like one potential filling. And he goes, yeah, man, you need four and they're all really bad. So I'm like, oh no. And uh, we go to, I go back to the dentist for four fillings, a 200 minute appointment and a teeth clean. Are you going to get up? Come on. Hurry up. I'm not going to do it for you. Sorry, my dog is just being, oh, well, then you think about it over there. Um, going to the dentist for four fillings, right? And we book a 200-minute appointment. And, uh, dude, as you can see at the start of this episode, before the appointment, I was pretty nervous for it, but I wasn't, like, freaking out. I just wasn't in the mood to be funny. And then I got to the dentist, and um, I was feeling apprehensive. I wasn't scared. But then he injected me with the local anesthetic and he had to use a lot. And I had straight after like a fucking massive panic attack. I had a huge, horrible, awful panic attack like nothing I've ever experienced. I started fucking hyperventilating. My heart rate spiked. I started crying. Um, and... Uh, I was like, I was just freaking out big time, which is so weird because even in the middle of the panic attack, I, I, I didn't feel scared of getting fillings. I didn't feel like, oh, this is going to hurt. I, I, I kept thinking, fuck, what's happening to me? What's happening? I'm scared. I don't know why. Uh, and, and then my hands started to go numb and I had this real horrible, horrible, like, awful panic attack. I, I had to get them to stop and I had to stand up and I had to go to the bathroom and freak out, look in the mirror and go, what's going on? Uh, they were really worried about me. Um, and, uh, I just kept thinking again and again, like, I don't want to be sick anymore. I, I'm, I, I hate being sick. I've been sick for so long. It's ruining my life. I can't do this anymore. I'm scared. And I had this, um, this, um, huge, huge panic attack. And, um, after about half an hour, uh, it just kind of stopped and I did the teeth clean and, uh, I was a little bit scared. I was shaking fucking heaps, shaking so much. It was really, really weird and scary. I was shaking so much. And, uh, I was like the, the, the dentist, he was, he's so good. It wasn't not his fault. He was so good. I was like, he goes, oh yeah, that's right. I took headphones in because I'm like, I'm anxious. I don't want to hear the noise of the drill. And then I put the headphones on. He puts the needles in. I had to have, because uh, it was four different fillings. So he had to give me two and a half doses on each tooth. So two and a half on my, on my bottom right, two and a half on my bottom left, and then one and a half on the top, right? Which is a, which is a, a lot of needles. And uh, I was fine with the needles. They hurt a little bit, but that was okay. And I was like, fuck, that's a lot of needles, but whatever. But then, yes, as soon as he finished injecting me and then he started to get the, the teeth clean thing out, the buffer, I started having this giant panic attack. Uh, and then eventually I calmed down after like half an hour of like crying and freaking out. And they kept leaving me alone and then coming back, like, oh, he'll be right. And then I'm sitting there, like, my head in my hands, freaking out, going, I don't know what's wrong. I don't want to be sick anymore. This sucks. And uh, they kept going in and out. Even the fucking receptionist came to check on me. And um, right before I had this huge panic attack, I was about to put on my headphones. Uh, and uh, he's talking to me. And, and uh, I go, oh, where? when will I be able to talk again? Because I knew I had to do this podcast and he goes oh you should be you'll be able to talk straight after I'm like oh no my job is like I'm a comedian I do this thing and he goes oh actually yeah I um I know my my uh one of my receptions is actually a really big fan of yours she was talking about your work and I had a look and you were really funny and I went I'm sorry I'm freaking out and I just started crying <laughs> he's going oh yeah actually I've, I've, I've had a look at your stuff and I start going ah <laughs> um 
And I had, yeah, I had this huge, like horrible, horrific panic attack, which has never happened to me like in public. And then after like half an hour, maybe even 40 minutes, things started to calm down enough. I'm like, all right, I think I'm okay. They were really like, hey man, do you want to go home? And I was like, I am not going to fucking come back here. I was like, if this is happening now, it's going to happen again, right? You've already fucking injected me with a numbing shit. I'm not going to go home with a numb face and no work done. All right, I'm going to do this shit. And then I started thinking, okay, maybe I should go home. But anyway, I got over it enough and uh, they started doing the, the teeth cleaning and I just, what really helped me was I was like, can you please, and this really confused him. I was like, can you please tell me exactly what you're doing? And uh, he started going through, all right, this is what this tool is for and this is what it does. And the nurse was the nurse was like, are you sure you want to hear this? And I was like, yes, please tell me everything. And he's like, well, what this is going to do is it's going to uh, destroy the teeth bone and then get out the uh, the, the, de- the de- decaying material uh, and there's going to be some blood and this, blah, 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 and you might feel this and I'm removing that and then I've got a Dremel and then I have a thicker Dremel and then I've got like a, a shovel and I'm listening to this and I, and I start – going from having this horrible panic attack to going, wow, dentist, dentistry is really interesting. Maybe I could be a dentist. <laughs> and the nurse, even the nurse was like, this cunt's a psycho. He went from having a fucking panic attack to be like, yeah, how are you cutting me up, doctor? Because I assume like hearing about it, most people go, oh my God, that's fucking horrible. But me, I'm like, that's really interesting. I can't, medical procedures, I can't watch I can like listen to them and have them described. And that's fascinating. Seeing it is horrible. L- listening to the specifics of what's happening, even the gross details. I'm like, oh, interesting. But they did that and he, and he, he did my uh, one of the tooth and then he did the second tooth uh, and he did the whole teeth clean. And the teeth clean look, took a lot longer than, than normal because obviously I wasn't able to clean my teeth for so long. And... Um, and he didn't get to finish the final tooth because I spent the first 40 minutes fucking freaking out and crying and having this huge panic attack. So I have to go back. But I was um, thinking about it, like even in the middle of this huge panic attack, I didn't feel scared. I've had, I've had panic attacks before very rarely and it's always been like a thing happened and I couldn't stop thinking about that scary thing. I think the worst one that I ever had, uh, actually one of the only other, only other ones that I, I've had was I remember I left my job to do comedy and I did my first ever show at the comedy festival and I made some money and then I, and then like, Eight months later, I ran out of that money and I had to go back to the call center to get a job. Uh, and I was doing okay. And then week two, um, I just had this thought of like, what if this is it? What if you never make it out? Because I quit the call center, I did comedy, and I ended up back in the call center. And I was like, what if you never make it back to comedy? What if this stumble isn't a stumble and this is the rest of your life? And I started to freak out. I had to go to the bathroom and I had this huge, I got caught in this loop of like, what if this is it? What if I'm stuck? What if I never make it? Maybe that one show was it. All this, all this kind of shit, uh, hyperventilating, all that kind of stuff. But this one at the dentist was so different where it was much, much, much worse physically, but mentally I was like, why am I freaking out? I don't know what I'm scared of. And then I eventually landed on, I don't want to be sick anymore. Um, and I was like, well, maybe it was triggered by just like the last time I went into a dentist and there were heaps of fingers and tools in my mouth. I ended up with this expander that stopped me from talking and kind of fucking ruined my career and my mental health. And I felt claustrophobic, but inside my own head, literally my skull, there was no space. It felt claustrophobic. I was like, is that my body trying to warn me of this thing that's going to happen? But then that didn't even feel right. And I ended up going back and I, I think, and I don't know if how true this is. I think it was the anesthetic. I think 
he gave me a really big dose of the anesthetic and I think I had a really bad reaction to it. I think. I don't know. I've Googled it and I've, I know that a lot of people have horrible, like um, almost psychotic reactions to general anesthetic where they go under and sometimes they don't go under, they start going crazy or after they wake up, they do go, they do go under then after they wake up, they, they go ballistic. And I, I went a little bit loopy. I was messaging people and shit and looking up stuff on my phone, but I think that's fairly normal. Um, but some people have like, yeah, panic attacks from general anesthetic, but I couldn't find anything about local. Um, but it was like, yeah, it was just interesting because I was nervous before the dentist, but I wasn't scared. Uh, and even in the middle of this panic attack, I didn't feel scared. I just felt uh, like so fucking unbelievably activated and adrenaline and uh, fight or flight and freaking out, but I couldn't. Because when I have had moments of anxiety or like panic attacks and stuff, I've been able to focus on like, all right, what's actually causing this and how can I process my way through it by thinking about that thing and going, well, that's actually not true because of this or that or, or it is true, but it will pass. Um, but this one, I was like, I don't know why I'm freaking out. So the only thing I can think of is like, man, did I have a bad reaction to the, to the anesthetic because it was so much of it was injected into me? Or maybe I, maybe it was my body freaking out, but my mind couldn't understand it because all my body knows is, is the last time something like this happened. We ended up with a cage in our mouth. I don't know. Has anyone had a, had a bad reaction like that at the dentist or from local anesthetic? Um, but they had a panic attack or something mental and you don't, you don't know why. I don't know. I thought it'd be, I, it confused the fuck out of me. And, uh, and what also I, I didn't initially, I didn't think it was the anesthetic, but the day after I was really depressed, um, which could just be me <laughs> going through it. But, uh, I felt weird and I felt very low. I almost felt like I was, I don't know because I've never done drugs or drunk anything, but I really felt like I was the day after was like, I was, it was like a come down. Uh, like I had come down from something like this massive spike in adrenaline, which could have been the, like I felt exhausted and stuff, which could have been like the panic attack, but it also could have been the anesthetic or whatever. It could have been both. It's so difficult to understand. Um, but I guess I'll find out the answer because in two weeks I get to go back and have the same anesthetic and have the final tooth done. <laughs> and yeah, even now I think about that and I'm not, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm not scared. So thinking about that now, I'm like, fuck, why did that even happen in the first place? But I guess that's mental health for you. Or that's bad reactions to medicine. You don't know if that's what's happened. I'll, I'll ask him about it when I see him next. Um, but yeah, I thought I would ask that. I want to know your thoughts. Does something like that ever happen to you? Um, right. Now, anyway, finally, I've got, uh, before we end the podcast here, I have uh, an email from a listener. If you want to send an email to the show, the email is podcast at loosebeers.com. Life advice, questions, stories, uh, things you want my opinion on, news stories, trending things, whatever the fuck you want to send me that you would like to hear talk about on the show, especially if you need some life advice or you have, or you have a story to tell me, send it to podcast at lewspears.com, L-E-W spears.com. All right, we've got this one. I'm crushing on my lesbian best friend and she wants me to hook her up with one of my friends. Uh, hey, Lewis, big fan from all the way in the UK. I would definitely buy a ticket if you came over here because I love your stuff. I'm going to get over there for sure. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, but this one's kind of long, but I'll share mostly unnecessary stuff. I'm sure you won't, but I'll do some cutting of my own. I need some serious advice or at least someone to rant to because I've been stuck in this situation for ages now and it seems like it's only going to get worse. I'm a university student and a few years ago, I came out to one of my friends as a bisexual. I'm a guy uh, because she is a lesbian. Uh, so that's fucking gay. So I didn't feel any pressure of being rejected. Um, long story short, a few years later, and we are best friends as a lot of the friends in our group were straight. So we get along really well. That's nice. But that's where the issue comes in because we've been spending so much time together. I think I've begun to majorly crush on her. Oh, 
oh, brother, this guy's stupid, which is obviously stupid of me, <laughs> which is obviously stupid of me for multiple reasons. The most obvious reason is because she's gay. Uh, the worst bit, though, is that I don't want to be crushing on her. I think it's really dangerous and stupid of me to have caught feelings like this, especially because when we first started hanging out, I told myself I would not let this situation happen and I really want these feelings to be gone and go back to how things used to be. To make matters worse now, she is crushing on another one of my new friends who really likes her back. My best friend has taken a year out of uni, so she isn't around as much, but the person she's crushing on keeps asking when she's going to come around. I know I could easily organize something so that the two of them, I guess these two girls, could meet because I think they'd make a good couple, but at the same time, I know something like this is going to really fucking hurt. Uh, I'm a very jealous person. It's easily my biggest flaw and I have never been in a relationship. Oh, no. So seeing my best gay friend get into a relationship with another woman and not me is going to hit me like a ton of bricks and makes me want to stop them from seeing each other, even if that is a horrible thing to do. I know what the answer is and I know that I'm a bad person, but I could really use some words of advice here because I can't talk to any of my friends about it for obvious reasons. In the end, I want what is best for her, but I don't know how I can do it if it means causing me so much pain. Um, yeah, look, dude, I would say, firstly, you're not a bad person. Uh, I would say that um, I, I wouldn't even call you naive because you saw this problem happening. I would call you self-destructive. This is like... Uh, yeah, this isn't a, this is not a bad you haven't done it's not you're not a bad person. You haven't done anything bad to anyone other than yourself. You haven't been very kind to you. This is a tough one because obviously if this girl's like gay, gay, not bisexual, if she is a lesbian, you're fucked because you're not going to get fucked. All right? So obviously even fucking pursuing or trying to pursue this is pointless. If she's a really close friend of yours, um I would almost say that you, for your own sake, might need to distance yourself from this person. I don't know. It's a hard one because if it's if it's a really good friendship, that would suck to lose for you and for her. But if it is something that you can't even... Here's the thing. You can't even treat her like a friend because you're in love with her. So it's like you might as well have been friend-zoned, right? So... She might view you as a friend, but you, at some point, it's gotten messy and you can't see her as a friend and that's not really right for her. So I would say that you should maybe tell her and go, I'm sorry, but I can't help myself. I feel like this. What do you think? And... She'll either help you see the futility in those feelings, right, which will hurt you but is good in the end, or she will go, well, fuck, man, I don't think we can be friends, which will hurt but will be good because right now you're kind of not being friends, are you? Like she's being your friend, you're trying to turn her, or at least in, as, as a fantasy, into something that she'll never be. So I think that you need to, you've been honest with yourself. That's great. But I think you might need to be honest with her as well. And I think that if it's getting to a point where these feelings are so bottled up within you and such a secret that are fucking with your head so much that you're emailing a comedian on a podcast and even considering sabotaging future relationships for her, if it's not this one, it'll be the next one that hurts you or the one after that. And you might even find yourself subconsciously going, I don't think this person is good for you when you know that they are, which is a horrible thing to do to her and a horrible way to be a friend. So I think you need to be honest with yourself, which you've done. But now the next part of that is being honest with the world and going, hey, uh, I have feelings for you. What the fuck should we do about this? She will either help you process them and get rid of them, which is good, or she will continue or she will start to lead you on, which is great because that's a great sign for you to go, oh, well, fuck, she's not my friend. She's manipulative. Or she will go, okay, well, I think that we need to have uh, a break from this friendship, which again, look, here's the thing. There are a lot of good 
outcomes for you, there aren't really any painless ones. And that's something that is a harsh reality for everyone. Because here's the thing, you've never had a girlfriend before. Maybe the reason, maybe something standing in your way is the fact that you're in love with a gay bitch. Have you thought about that? That the reason why you haven't been putting yourself out there as much as you can is because a small part of you is intentionally holding you back from doing so just in case this woman who is a fucking lesbian falls in love with you and goes against what's in her fucking DNA and mind. Obviously something that's impossible. What you are doing, my friend, is self-sabotaging. And it might not seem obvious, but it's there. And that needs to stop because that's very unkind to yourself. You're not a bad person. You're just a person in love with the wrong person. And that's no good. And the only way to get over someone who you're in love with when it's not reciprocal is to either put it out there in the open and process it together and so that those feelings can be let out of your body and then seem to be not reciprocated so you can process them and move on from them or you need to completely distance yourself from this person because it's making you a bad friend and that's a bad result for her. It's an even worse result for you because you're going to be guilty and you're never going to find anyone because you're going to be pining after this unrealistic, impossible uh, non-option, which is a fucking gay woman. So I'm sorry, there's no nice... Uh, painless answer for you, but there is a happy side of this. And that is you don't have to fucking be racking your brains forever thinking about this, this chick who will never be into you. And if there's that small, tiny little piece of you that thinks maybe this, maybe that it'll never be satisfied unless you tell her and it'll never move on until, until it hears from her I like pussy. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my advice. Uh, send an email to podcast at loosebeers.com. That's the podcast. Uh, if you want more, it's on Patreon right now. Go and get it. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you next Sunday, and I hope you have a shit one. Bye. <laughs>